Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm your host, Mary Hammond, director of the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau. My guest today is David Boggs, and he's promotions and events coordinator for Paducah Renaissance Alliance, which is a national Main Street organization. Yes. Welcome, David. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're glad to be here today to talk about Barbecue on the River, the 14th annual Barbecue on the River. Right. That's a... Uh, <laughs> you have to sit here and count. How did it get to be 14? Right. It seems like it was just yesterday. We just had the first one. So yes. it's, it's been a fun 14 years. Yes, it's been uh, a quick 14 years and seen tremendous growth in Barbecue on the River and how it came from a dream. Right. I just always remember Mimi Wiley wanting us to have a barbecue so, so much for so many years, and, and here it came to fruition, but I mean, it took um, Susie and Roe and that determination to, to make it happen, right. and they knew how to pull everybody together. They did. They did a great job early on and still continue to support it today. Yes, very much so. Well, and then also taking the uh, traditional uh, Old market days. Mm -hmm. I'm blank on the word. Right. Of the old market days. Taking it and incorporating it, and that has also continued. To yeah, grow. it's unbelievable the 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 growth of old market days. I think probably when barbecue started, there may have been ten or fifteen old market day vendors, and now we're up to ninety three spaces have been rented. Wow! Just for that. Well, let's start with what are the dates of this year? This year, barbecue on the river will be September twenty fifth, twenty sixth, and twenty seventh. That's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, we'll start around lunchtime on Thursday and Friday, selling until 9, 10 o'clock mm -hmm. or when the barbecue runs out for that day. And then on Saturday, we start at about 9 o'clock in the morning and go till 10 o'clock at night. So on Thursday, let's just kind of take this day by day. Um, not everybody, you think everyone will be cooking? Yes, everybody will be cooking. Everybody, whether they're cooking barbecue or whether they're cooking the side items, everybody will be cooking on Thursday. So, and then all the other um, things that we like, uh, that we look for every year. Right, the They're funnel cake, the, the yeah. strawberry shortcake, hot fudge the cake. Corn. Corn. Um, it's all going to be available by lunchtime on Thursday. Good. Well, actually, they start setting up earlier than that, almost yes. the weekend before anymore. Right. You'll, it, it's kind of fun to go down there. You'll see some of the barbecue contestants begin building their booths and setting up their pits and getting all that kind of stuff set up as early as that Sunday. And there are awards for the, the decorated booth? Yes, we give the decorated booth award along with all the best, you know, the overall winner, the reserve winner, sure. the best ribs, chicken, shoulders, whole hog. It's all just a contest as much as it is a charitable event. Now, World Headquarters with all of this is at 2nd and Jefferson, am I right? Yes. Under the tents, and this is where anybody who is a judge or anyone who has a question about when they come to set up their booths, and right. we know this is a community charitable event, yes. which really sets us apart from many other festivals. Right. Um, a lot of the festivals, the sanctioned festivals, um, they're great organizations, but it really is just a contest. But ours was started as a way for charities to raise money and now today there's probably over 75 different charities that are participating in some way with barbecue um, whether it be parking attendance that we you know that we pay or whether it be they've got a barbecue team there's about 75 different charities that that receive some type of funding through barbecue um, you know through raising money with their booths and it brings in between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars annually for those different charities that's fabulous so it's not just the barbecue teams that are that are cooking for charity, but everybody in there, all of the little ones, all the drinks, including for you all, right. for the Paducah Renaissance Alliance, right. the, the uh, drink trailers. Right, any food product, mm -hmm. if it's a food item, a portion of the proceeds that's made at that does go to some charity. The old market day vendors, it's more, you know, they really are their own little businesses, so that's its own separate event, but if it's a food item, a portion of the proceeds does go to charity. I looked over on the website, which by the way is BBQ on the river. Dot org. Uh, don't have to don't spell it out. Just bbq on the river. Dot org, and there are several things you can click on. One is a list of the con barbecue contestants mm -hmm. and their charity, and it's pretty impressive. Right. Uh, everything from uh, youth programs, United Way, Oscar Cross Boys and Girls programs, Family Service Society, um, uh, Heath Football Boosters, Dream Factory, churches, uh, police, Cancer Society, Salvation Army. A little bit of everything. Right, it's really wonderful. Five hundred thousand. Between four and five hundred thousand um, dollars. Some of what, you know, like I said, barbecue pays folks to to do security. You know, for, right. to allow parker. You know, allow our folks in and out of the festival area. 
they receive a fee. We pay charities to pick up some of the trash that's at the event. So it's not just, again, not just about the charities selling things down there, but barbecue itself puts some money back to some different charities. Often people will say, well, why isn't this part of the Memphis in, the May, in May or the Kansas City Barbecue Society? But this really is a custom barbecue festival. Right. It meets the needs of, of, Paducah. of Paducah. And many of these barbecuing teams do participate, are, um, gosh, uh, accredited, maybe that's sanctioned. the wrong, sanctioned, sanctioned by uh, the barbecue teams. But th this is so custom made to fill our needs. And this is, this. Every one of our nonprofits, there's probably not many in our community that aren't involved right. in this. Um, and, and that is one of the reasons we haven't sanctioned with the festival. There, Memphis and May and Kansas City are great barbecue mm -hmm. organizations. Um, but a lot of, again, those festivals, you don't feed the public. You know, right. if you go to a, 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 one of those sanctioned events, you don't necessarily get to try the, the food of the grand champion. Um, but there, you know, at our festival, we are feeding the public. And that really does make it fun, and right. everybody is. Uh, it likes to be a part of a part of this. And in fact, people plan class reunions and family reunions around the, uh, the barbecue on the river, which really makes it fun. It does. It does. Just this morning, I went online to see if I could find some of the class reunions happening. I believe mm -hmm. it's Tillman's class of '78, and then there's um, is it an all '60s reunion maybe that. Uh, that meets each year. I'm thinking. Um, we aren't real sure because of some of the riverfront redevelopment that, that we thought was going to be going on. We, the class reunions are not going to be in Schultz Park this year. So we're, we're kind of reorganizing that. We do have some space available. If anyone wants to call us, we can let them know where that space will be. So in other words, if you're listening to this and you've heard anybody talk about a reunion or you're part of a reunion, give David a call because you want to be organized and don't want to go through there and try to say, well, you know, I'm supposed to be down here and have my tent in the back and I always go in Schultz Park because it isn't going to happen this year. Right. So this, uh, be sure and communicate. And what is your phone number? 444-8649. Um, 444-8649 and give him a call just so you can kind of get this in your head what the setup is. Um, you may have noticed on the logo this year I said what is this on here? It looks like a building crew on the Barbecue on the River logo this year but it, and it's, a, it's always got the pea, pig and it's always got the, uh, the chicken, chicken. Uh, but this year they're in their work clothes and this is in support of the riverfront development. Right. That's so I mean, and you know, the, it's we it's such a that's such a great part of the community as well as barbecue. So we wanted to support that as well. So it's great. Little things set us back, but we're getting there. So I think we'll be really excited about the the changes that'll take place in the riverfront over the next couple of years. Some of the things that people are always asking, and maybe they'll be looking as they watch this show or wondering, you know, when I come down, I'm really struggling for a place to park, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, I've got somebody who's handicapped. What are we going to do? I'm volunteering. Um, can I get a pass? Well, you know, everybody, you can imagine with all these right. nonprofits, there's a lot of volunteers. Can you address some of those? Sure. Um, Handicap parking is behind the Finkels building, which is right on Kentucky Avenue. Um, so if they've got a handicap sticker, they can come down Kentucky Avenue. The security parking officers will allow them in with the handicap sticker to direct them to that parking lot behind the pink Finkels building on um, Kentucky and 2nd Street, I believe that is. Um, and then as far as parking, um, Carson Park, which is the fairgrounds on 28th Street, we're going to have satellite parking there and we will have shuttles that will be running ev just continually. We'd like to say about every 30 minutes, but we aren't sure. real sure with traffic how long it's going to be. There'll be two buses running continually from Carson Park to the barbecue on the sure. river. It will pick up at the same place it drops off, which will probably be on the corner of 2nd and Monroe Street. We're kind of working through those logistics right now as well. Um, but we're hoping that's going to alleviate some of that congestion downtown you know you'll be able to park take mm -hmm. a shuttle down whenever you get back to your car when you you know you've eaten all you can eat you aren't going to have a real headache sure. with getting out because it's not going to be as congested there on 28th street as it will in the heart of the event i'm thinking that if you're handicapped it may be easier to park at carson park and take a shuttle down yes. and get right to the heart right. of barbecue on the river than to come across market house square and there will at least be one shuttle that will be handicapped accessible we're still working through the logistics of that but we're at least going to have one of those that will be wheelchair handicap accessible you know I, uh, and i also hear this well you know that handicapped parking isn't very close to barbecue. It is a block away. It is made more for people with wheelchairs mm -hmm. than it is for someone who um, has a walker or just has the bad knee, right. uh, that kind of a thing. If you are um, mobile, but you have a little bit of a handicap, 
you better, you're better off parking at Carson Park, taking the shuttle, which really is going to be very close to the main information tent and picnic tables. Right. Because there, will you have picnic tables on the lawn of the quilt museum? Yes, there'll be some picnic tables there. Um, Four Rivers Church also has the large tent that they set up with picnic tables underneath it, which is down near the executive inn. Um, there'll be some picnic tables near the beer garden, kind of in front of the beer garden at the main stage. And there'll be some place strategically throughout the festival as well. I mean, it's a big crowd. And if you do have a problem getting around, it's not easy to get through. It's hard on your own two feet getting through right. there, just regular. So you, um, if you've got someone with you that you might be able to sit there and enjoy the crowd and be a part of the festival, but have somebody else helping to get in that line and stand there and, and, and get, the, get the goods for right. you. That, I think that'll work a lot better. So then what about uh, the street blockings? What are, what's blocked off? Um, Kentucky, Broadway, Jefferson, Madison and Monroe Street are all going to be blocked off at 3rd Street. Okay. Um, those streets may be blocked off a little bit further up depending on how the crowd goes. Mm -hmm. They may be blocked off as far as 4th Street. We just kind of have to wait and, and play that game to see how, the, see how the crowd gets and how heavy traffic gets. And then 2nd Street, Market House Square, Water Street, all those streets are blocked off as well. Uh, of course, there will be a couple of boats in during that mm -hmm. time period. I think we've got the Delta Queen and the River Barge right. during that time period. Delta Queen's getting down to those final days. I know, They're threatening. It's sad to Very sad. I keep. I have high hopes that, that still uh, will be saved. But uh, looking at my schedule here, uh, Thursday is the Delta Queen in the morning, mm -hmm. so they're just being on the activity, but they really won't be seen too much unless somebody's. Uh, has barbecue a little early. I have a feeling they'll be early. I bet they will be. And then on Saturday, the really big day, we'll have um, the river barge. But you know what? They don't come in till late. They won't come in till three. They come in at three o'clock in the morning on Saturday. So they'll be there all day. Okay. And the all cool day. thing about that's that good. being there with Saturday is that's also marine industry days. So the, the maritime industry, which is real important to Paducah, um, they're gonna have a, a, tow, a, mm -hmm. a tow boat that you can tour. Um, they'll have some different events going on for the kids. They'll have a line throwing, you know, to, to kind of experience what sure. the, the deck cans go through and how hard that work is. And it's really gonna highlight what the river industry does to Paducah. So that'll be taking, taking place all day long on Saturday, along with the children's entertainment that we have at Wilson Stage as well. Wilson, will there be any vendors? On There'll next. be some food vendors inside the flood wall. We've got several um, food vendors that'll be there. It's a great, that's another great kind of secret location. It's shade. It There's some picnic tables down there. Um, great fun family entertainment taking place on that stage as well. So you can gather your food and your goodies all around, go down there and sit on the many steps and watch the children's activities. Right. What type of children's activities are down there? Wow, I mean, it's a huge Let's range of things. See. There's puppets, marionettes, magicians. There's a guy that does some tricks with um, a whip, a bull whip. Oh. And there's some family comedians. Just it, it, it changes every 30 minutes. Probably one of the most popular things with kids. There's a guy called the Mad Science Guy, and he takes safe household chemicals and and makes some type of little science experiment. It's a make and take it kind of thing. I that know the was past very couple of popular. Years, the kids have left with yes. like a little cup of goop or slime, whatever you <laughs> oh, want to no. call it. And they had a real a great time creating that and ha having that fun experience. Now, is that family entertainment on the stage throughout the day only on Saturday? It starts on Thursday afternoon about 4 or 5 o'clock. Wow, Starts okay. on Friday afternoon around 4 or 5 o'clock mm -hmm. and then pretty much all day on Saturday. And once again, this will be on your website. Yes. If you want it to, if you really don't want to miss one of those uh, entertainers, you make sure and go on the website and, and check that out. But now the big stage that gets set up in the opening of the flood mm -hmm. wall, um, you've got some big names coming for that. Right. Um, that entertainment starts on Thursday afternoon as well. We have, I know the Mer Vegas All-Stars are playing, I believe at seven o'clock on Thursday night. They're a great band. We've got some of our local talent like the Cruisers, Lou Jaton, Partial Post. Um, Saturday, the sh um, legendary Shack Shakers are coming back in town like to play them. a con, you know, to play for us on Saturday night. And that's kind of a throwback. They haven't been back, I don't think, to play a concert in a while in Paducah. So they're excited. We're excited about them coming. And again, all that's on the website as well under the event itinerary on the website. So there on Water Street, uh, between Broadway and Jefferson Street, um, there are some vendors on the sides, mm -hmm. but then in the very middle you've got uh, picnic tables, and then there's a roped off area, right. a, a social area, right. that, which the Paducah Symphony sponsors, and it is a beer garden. Right. 
Um, and, and that's their fundraiser. They're another one that's impacted greatly by the barbecue on the river. You can go get your barbecue sandwich at any of the wonderful, great 42, 43 vendors that we've got down there serving barbecue. Take it in the beer garden, you know, enjoy your sandwich and a nice cold draft beer. Now, besides the restrooms that, uh, the center that's, that's permanent down mm -hmm. there, are there other porta potties around? There are. Um, we've got two portable stations that we brought in. They're called comfort stations. It's really just like using your bathroom mm -hmm. at home or using a, a, a public restroom in a, a restaurant. Wash or, your hands there you, too. Yes, it's not like a porta potty. Mm -hmm. The toilet's actually mm -hmm. flush. Um, they're going to be in the parking lot right near the gazebo. You can't miss okay. them. They're a big, um, kind of look like a, a small tractor trailer. And we would encourage folks to use those. We're going to have probably some, some of those inflatable puppets sitting on top mm -hmm. of those restrooms so people can actually see where those are. And we okay. encourage folks to really use those as much as they can. The permanent restrooms down there um, on the corner of Jefferson and Water Street really go through a lot and it becomes really difficult for folks to, to man those and keep those running smoothly and then also right around the corner from that inside the flood wall we're going to have some we are going to have some portable toilets some porta potties that we call them in schultz park yes and we're encouraging the men to use mm -hmm. those because it's a quick one going there and and come back out so we'll have several of those set up as well but don't think you're going to sneak in through the executive inn and go into schultz park and park right. up there there won't be anything back there No, there will not be anything but it's just kind of blocked off to the public back yes. there it's just a gets to be a little bit much and i know in past years People have cut through uh, farmers' markets sometimes when they really shouldn't right. with vehicles. And it's um, if you are down there and really look at the vehicle traffic, it's just downright dangerous if you have anything. Much if you moving. don't need, if you don't need to move your vehicle, right. you know we don't move it. That's why the streets are blocked off that far mm -hmm. away from the event um, because we do want everybody to be as, stay as safe as we possibly can. Now tell me about the 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 church that really helps out that has like a big rest area right it's four rivers church um they have we actually have they have three campuses now they meet in metropolis here in paducah mm -hmm. and they also meet up at the lakes um they've been helping barbecue probably for eight to ten years now just offering a hospitality service at no charge big tent right big tent they have um big widescreen tvs that they show um relatively new um, family movies they'll be showing during the night. Um, great place, you know, if the kids are getting a little restless, they can sit there and watch a movie. Diaper changing. Yes. One of the things they're doing this year is um, Passport, Barbecue Passport Adventure is what I think they're calling it. And there's going to be four or five stations set up around the barbecue festival um, to where you go and you get your passport stamped. And it's going to bring um, things that we need to be thinking about, whether it's the armed forces, first responders, being green, um, mm -hmm. you know, environmental issues visit those, get a little information about what's going on with those um, schools, get your passport stamp, then take it back to the Four Rivers Church Hospitality Tent and you're going to be registered to win some pretty great prizes. I'm not sure great. what those are, but I know they're going to be substantially mm -hmm. valuable prizes that you're going to be entered to win. So they're, they're hoping and we're hoping that folks will take advantage of that as well. Kind of like tourists for a day. Tourists for a day or, you know, Similar. kind of stole the idea from Disney as well. You know, the passport to adventure <laughs> didn't start that with Disney tourists has. for a day. You know, well, <laughs> no, you know, Disney's the, always know. <laughs> years right. ahead of everybody else. So. But if you peek in that tent, you'll see a lot of uh, families go there to get out of the sun, get a little rest. Right. They're, the kids have a play area. They'll have clay there that the kids can okay. create some type of activity, you know, some type of wonderful creation with clay. Who knows, we may sure. find uh, our next budding artist down there at Barbecue on the River in that tent. You just never know. The um, other thing that I've always enjoyed there were the wet wipes. Right. <laughs> and that's really how that, that's how yes. that grew. Um, what Four Rivers Church does started out as a 10 by 10 space that Barbecue on the River allowed them to use. And they just started out handing out wet naps yes. and, and toothpicks, you know, and it just really grew to a service that, that the church enjoys to them. It's also mm -hmm. a service that barbecue, it's, it provides a need that barbecue couldn't do sure, otherwise. Sure. Well, and it's a nice large congregation that allows them to have plenty of folks to help. Right. Now, let's, I want to run over a couple of little things that, um, you know, people will say, well, I saw golf carts down there or uh, something uh, of that nature. Now, I know just from being in my own office, mm -hmm. We thought at one time, we'll get a golf cart. We'll right. be able to go around. Well, you know, you can't do it in no, those it, crowds. It's too busy. You will see a couple of golf carts there. Um, Usually with garbage or emergency. Right, or emergency mm -hmm. vehicles on there. There'll be a lot of garbage or a lot of 
golf carts in areas that the general public's not allowed to go. That's to get some product from, say, the drink trailer, you know, where they bought a few cases of soda, mm -hmm. getting it to their booth space. Um, but golf carts, skaters, they're strongly discouraged in the heated event. You'll see some running early in the morning between like seven o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning and 10 o'clock, but pretty much after 10 o'clock in the morning, so They're if done. you're volunteering with a barbecue team or um, one of your nonprofit group, you're helping out somewhere, don't think, oh, I've got a gator. You know, we can pull it down there. We'll be right. able to get around. It just is. It doesn't work. It doesn't just, work. It's a liability for your organization mm -hmm. as well as yourself. So. And the other thing, especially this being an election year and everybody has such pa is so passionate about uh, the, the, their candidate that they're mm -hmm. supporting, please don't think that just because this is a public event that you can come down and start distributing um, whatever. Right. This, there, it's just not, it doesn't need to happen. Right. We, we do discourage folks from just handing out paper literature because what happens um, in an event like that, it does end up on the ground. It's wasting money for the organization as well as it creates a, a lot more litter for the barbecue organization to pick up. So we do discourage just passing out any literature. I believe there's an ordinance, city so. ordinance uh, about that. So, and no going around and putting it in the car and the windshield and all that kind of thing. It just ends up on the ground. Right. And uh, please help us to deal with that. There's enough litter. Although, you know, I've been to so many festivals. This is the cleanest festival, especially when you consider how many pounds of barbecue. Right. Can you give us an idea of the amount? Of um, there's 35,000 pounds of pork, I believe, is served and over 12,000 pounds of chicken. And that, that's, prob that's really low. Th my brain went blank when you asked me that question. I should have it right off the top of my head. That's really low. But I'm, I know it's well over 25 tons, actually, of um, pork and 12 tons of chicken. So I was a little low on those, but it's a lot of, and that's just what they compete in. That's not including the hot fudge cakes, the bratwurst, the hot dogs, the hamburgers that some of the different vendors, sure. that's just the pork and chicken. Well, and I um, think about how many corn on the cobs right. <laughs> come in. There's a, there's a tremendous amount and the amount of ice now, and you all have a place worth ice right. and people come and buy their ice and your, um, uh, your meat distributors are right there on site. It's like a, a it's like a large scale grocery store, convenience store is kind of what we've described it to because there's the ice truck, there's the Pepsi truck, you know, for the folks that are selling the Pepsi, mm -hmm. there's the, the meat supply that have it set up just like a grocery store. You say you want two cases of chicken, they roll it on the carts right down to sure. you. So. so this is good meat, good chicken. This isn't, yes. you know, um, I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> this is all good, it's, right. you know, the, um, this is good quality meat that's being fresh, served here. Fresh, not frozen. The best. Everything there is, the best. is fresh, not frozen. That's good. Um, I'm pleased to, to announce, I, I'm not sure that you know this, that um, Paducah's 14th ever barbecue on the river is one of the Commonwealth of Kentucky's fall top 10 events. Wow. So we're pleased we have a, 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 an award here for you, Paducah's 14th ever Barbecue on the River, and this was awarded by Kentucky Tourism Council, Kentucky's Travel Industry Association. So Great. Congratulations. Thank you. We have entered Barbecue on the River into one of the top 100 events in North America, so we hope in the next couple of months to be hearing, hearing right. about Right, we'd that. love to hear that, because next year's our um, 15th anniversary, yes. so it'd be great to have that accolade to celebrate the 15th anniversary with. We do have um, bus tours that come for, for the event, and we were encouraged to attend, to apply for a top 100 events, and that is through American Bus Association. Great. So so that's gonna be uh, exciting. Just to be asked to enter right. is, um, is very nice. So we have two copies, that's nice. Um, talking about some of the uh, vendors that are there, there's a little bit of everything. What do I see? Fried Twinkies? Yep, there's, if you can deep fry it, it's probably at barbecue. I think any festivals like that. I wanna um, say a Milky Way? Um, we have had folks that have fried candy bars in the past. I don't think they're doing that this year, but they fried candy bars, they fried apples, they fried different kinds of fruit, they fried Twinkies and fried Oreos. And then you've got your classics like your onion rings mm -hmm. and your French fries and your curly fries and, and all that sort of thing. So there's something at barbecue for everyone's taste buds.
There really is, even a vegetarian, right? Yes, yes. Even, yes. I think that uh, many of the people who are watching have got in their minds the booths that they won't miss. Right. And luck how lucky we are that it really evens out, that it's an equal opportunity for everyone. I think what folks can look at, in the Paducah Sun, there's going to be an insert in the Sunday before barbecue. I don't know that date right off the top of my head, but there will be an insert in the paper with the map okay. that will say, you know where each vendor is and then the Sunday prior to that the post of the barbecue on the river poster will be um, inserted into the Paducah Sun that will have a schedule of events so those are those are two things to be looking for to hold on to to kind of plan your 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 personal event itinerary to know who you want to eat sure. with you know what time you want to get there for the specific entertainment so those are two publications you will really want to be looking for and hold on to I hope that will be on the barbecue website as well. Yes, yes. And then the now, map is not on the web. The web map is not right. on our website. I think we've usually itinerary. had it on ours, and okay. I'd like for us to be able to do that. Okay. It helps so much if you can download this and print it out. It doesn't have to be in color. Print it out. You've got something that gives you a little bit of direction when you come down there. I think that you'll find it'll make your your day much more enjoyable, as well as looking at what are the the events. Right. Um, the, the performances that you want to catch. Well, David, I know that you work year round on this and um, had an awful lot of fun working on this um, it is all fun. these years. And what, what it's going to be really good. So, what have you got here? You've got some um, good sweatshirts. Yes, and hats we've got some um, some branded products. We've got our sweatshirts, our hats that we are selling in the um, Renaissance office. The sweatshirts are forty dollars. The hats are fifteen dollars. We've also got some long sleeve T-shirts, similar to what you see here, and they're twenty dollars. And they'll be available at the festival as well. But we, you can go ahead and purchase those now. And then we will have the souvenir T-shirts available at the festival. Um, I think the the logo has been switching on the screen mm -hmm. here behind us, so they'll be able to buy the souvenir T-shirt as well at the festival. Now, will you have the hog calling and the chicken clucking contest you know, again? I think we. I think. I think we retired the hog calling and the chicken clucking contest oh, last year. Well, let's then give us a little squeal over there on that right. pig. You can do it. Let me see if I can get the chicken going here. <laughs> All right, I think this means that it's almost time for us to go, that we're being pretty silly. <laughs> we hope that we'll see you on the river where there won't be any clucking and no squealing, but we will see you for Barbecue on the River uh, the last weekend in September. If you have any questions, check bbqontheriver.org or always paducatravel.org. Tra no, just paducatravel. Sorry. <laughs> Join us on the river. I'll see you there. Sounds awful good, David. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you.